Hi, Jeff Flyers. Welcome to this class, Communication Level Up for Elections. This is an election ready class in grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary. Grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary. Linked to what? Linked to the elections, linked to politics, linked to leadership and governance. Before we get started, for those who do not know me before now, this is who I am. My name is Abdul Baki Hassan. I am a communication and diction expert, the lead tutor at Flying Colors Communications Academy. I am an award-winning editor and IELTS instructor. If you want to take IELTS, I will help you get your desired band scores through my Flying IELTS course. I am the lead tutor at Flying Colors Communications Academy. I studied linguistics, effective communication, global pronunciation, public speaking, and language pedagogy. I have successfully helped over 7,000 learners improve their communication skills and enhance their communicative competence. I have over six years experience teaching public speaking, correct pronunciation, grammar, accent reduction, and fluent communication. Abdulbaki Hassan is certified by Cambridge Assessment English, British Council, Macquarie University in Australia, and the University College of London. On Instagram and TikTok, I am Flying Colors Tutor. WhatsApp, 0810-443-1433. On Facebook, Abdelbaki Hassan. Let's get started. It's not about me. The class is about you. Communication level up for elections, an election ready class in grammar, pronunciation and vocabulary. We have grammar, we have pronunciation and we have vocabulary. Which of these three do you think is the most crucial? Which of these three do you think, oh, this is the most essential? All of them are important, but which of them do you think rates the highest of all, the greatest of all time? Which do you think everyone needs to understand before they jump to the other. Let me know, we have grammar, pronunciation and vocabulary. Which of these three do you think is the greatest of all time? The D-O-A-T, pronunciation, mm, grammar, Ibrahim Alaliri, pronunciation, Abdikadri Sani, Gazal, pronunciation. If you're watching the replay, answer the question as well before I give you the final answer. Olaladi Marufa, pronunciation, grammar, pronunciation. Mm, okay, do we have more? Grammar. Suleiman Fasasi, grammar, okay. Mm, let's save time. Yes, this is the winner. <laughs> this is the winner. Grammar. Grammar comes first because it is the most connected to our meanings. The meanings of the words are usually connected to the grammar. And when you say you can speak a language, the foremost feature that people want to see is, oh, what's your grammar like? Are you using the words correctly? What about your tenses? Your verbs, are you saying everyone are coming to our people? Will, even if you're pronouncing the word for you, everyone are, ah, what kind of bullet is that? Ah, ah, what, eh, eh, everyone are, <laughs> all are, are coming. So it says all are is coming. So grammar comes first. What's the second? which should come second after grammar. So grammar is linked to correctness. Grammar is linked to our meanings. And we all know that the primary purpose of communication is to be able to transfer the meanings in our minds. So grammar connects both meaning and correctness. So grammar comes first. Then pronunciation. 
Vocabulary means the words that we use. Vocabulary means the words that we use. So grammar may come, uh, pronunciation may be second and vocabulary may also be second, depending on your communication goals, okay? The words that we use are all embedded in vocabulary, okay? Pronunciation may come second before vocabulary, but most times vocabulary should come second before pronunciation. And by pronunciation, I mean the correct pronunciation, the correct, the clear diction. Sometimes you're not pronouncing the words correctly, but people appreciate you because you're using the right words and you're also correct. You can communicate your meanings without the high pronunciation. However, you should be able, it, you, you should be able to pronounce the words to a certain level that people understand what you're trying to say and the meanings that you're trying to transfer. All right, thank you very much for engaging. Grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, or grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, depending on your level, depending on your goals, okay? Now let's get started. The first word that we will study in this class is the word electorate. Electorate, that's the pronunciation of the word. Electorate. I already muted everyone because of the sound and probable distraction. So I just want you to practice with me as I teach. The electorate, 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 to so pronounce electorate. This refers to all the people that are eligible to vote. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, for example, all the people that are eligible to vote are called the electorate, okay? It's usually left alone. You do not need to add any S most times, okay, just electorate. And it is also interesting to note that you can use the singular verb or the plural verb. You can say the electorate is, and you can say the electorate are, you can say the electorate dumps, and you can say the electorate dump, both the singular verb and, the, and its plural counterpart can be used with the subject, the electorate. You know, the rules of Concord dictate that when you have the singular subject, you should have the singular verb thereafter. The primary rules of Concord also dictate when you have the plural subject, you should have the what? The plural verb. However, there are exceptions. There are certain words that go with both singular verbs and plural verbs. The electorate is one of such. For example, the electorate is or are encouraged to participate in the upcoming election. The candidates are appealing to the electorate for their support. The political party with the most support from the electorate is likely to win. That's for electorate, electorate, electorate. If you got that, type electorate in the chat box so we can move to the next word. Did you find that? The electorate is fair enough. Um, Mr. Ibrahim Olaliri, not really. So type sentences in the chat box that show your understanding of the word electorate. Mr. Ibrahim Olaliri, the electorate refers to all the people that are eligible to vote. Electorate, electorate, electorate. Okay, let's move on. We still have a lot to learn. The word cast, cast, cast. What does it mean? The word cast has a lot of meanings. So words that have multiple meanings are called polysemous words, polysemous words. Polysemous words. This word has over 15 meanings. Polysemous word. It is a polysemous word. Why? Because it has a lot of meanings, different meanings. For example, one can say, I won't allow you to cast aspersion on my person. That is, I won't allow you to cast doubt. I won't allow you to soil my name. Okay? Cast. Can you see? Cast. The director cast Funke Onosoya as my mother in that movie. That is, 
the director, asked Funke Onosoya to act as my mother in that movie. To cast is to ask to act or to take the role of someone in a movie. The word cast again, the lecturer cast a cold glance at me. That is, he looked at me in this A, you, <laughs> your CGPA, say goodbye to it. <laughs> so that is for the lecturer. The lecturer cast a cold glance at me. You can have the lecturer cast a welcoming smile in my direction. Cast, cast, just the same cast, giving us different meanings. That's because it is a polysemous word. I like the chat box, it's buzzing. The lecturer, okay, I already cast my votes now. Cast used in the context of elections. I already cast my vote. I already cast my vote. In the context of what? Of elections. Now, what did you notice? You can see cast in its base form. Cast, past form, cast, past form. Cast, past form. This tells you that the word, the verb cast is an irregular verb. These kind of verbs, they are the same. Sometimes they change. They're all called irregular verbs. They are not predictable, unlike those verbs whose past and past participle forms are formed by adding the suffix ed. Dance, the past, the past tense is what? danced, past participle, danced, predictable, but cast, 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 run, run, run. It is an irregular verb. Aside from the fact that the word cast is polysemous, the word is also irregular. It is an irregular verb. So you do not say casted. That is non-standard. That is a key. Ah, ah, where are you from? 18th century. Ah, ah. Casted, I have casted my vote. For Lawale, Kujira, ah, ah. Let me see the names in the chat box so I can call you out. Olajumoke, Shukura, ah, ah, Adeniji, casted, casted. Don't type casted tomorrow, I'll call you. <laughs> I'll call you out, okay? So it is cast at all times, past form, Past participle, cast, 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 okay? Other examples, verbs, burst. You do not have busted, but burst, burst. Balloons always burst. The balloons already burst yesterday, not bursted, despite the fact that you're communicating in the past form. The kids have burst the balloons, not the kids have busted the balloons, okay? Cut is another example. They cut their hands daily. <laughs> they cut their hands daily. That's not possible. They cut their hands daily. Let's have it that way. They cut their hands, a section. They have that. <laughs> they cut their hands yesterday. They have cut their hands the same form throughout. Let's move to the next. Impeach. Impeach does not mean removal from one's office. It doesn't mean that you removed someone from the position. It doesn't mean to remove or to sack or to fire. No, it is to make a formal statement that a public official is guilty of a serious offense in connection with their job. Making a formal statement that confirms that a public official is guilty may lead to them being removed from the office or from their position of authority. However, it does not in itself mean that you've removed that person. It is just like an accusation. The fact that you accuse someone doesn't mean the person is guilty, okay? The fact that you make that statement doesn't mean the person would be removed. So impeach 
does not mean that someone is removed. No, it actually means that it is actually a formal statement confirming that a public official is guilty of a serious offense in connection with their job. Okay. The opposition party, this is an example. The opposition party wants to impeach the president for violating the constitution. Another example, the governor was impeached for corruption charges. So impeached, the word impeached, I want to know those who have been following me, is it a regular verb or an irregular verb? I already told you the difference. The word impeach from these examples, the word impeach, is it regular or irregular? Regular, yes, regular, predictable. You, just, you only need to add the suffix ed to your, to your verbs, to the main verb, to the base form, impeach, impeached, dance, danced, unlike irregular, cut, 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 not predictable. You can also have come, came, come, got, gets, got, gotten, all right? Now let's continue running neck and neck, when two competitors are running neck and neck, they are level with each other and they have the equal chance of winning. Maybe the results are already out everywhere. So once we hear 1 million, the total is 1 million and 100 votes here, the other 1 million 90 votes. So <laughs> they're running neck and neck. Hey, 90, remaining 10, another state. So at that period, at that moment in time, both contestants, both politicians, both candidates, presidential candidates are running neck and neck. They are level with each other and they have the equal chance of winning. You just, hey, who will now win? At that period, you describe them as running neck and neck, okay? So what other words can you use instead of contest? Tell me in the chat box, what other words can you use instead of contest? Let me see my people, race, content, vi, exactly. Good, race, good. So they all mean compete. For example, we have vi, we have run, also have stand. Yeah, stand can also mean to contest, to compete. For example, the opposition party is expected to stand against the ruling party. So the key word here is stand, stand against to compete with them, fire for fire, <laughs> okay? Let me have your sentences in the chat box. Both candidates are competing for the post of presidents. Yeah, good. All right, no other sentence, let's move on. President elect and elected president, what is the main difference? Yes, we have three prominent candidates vying for the presidential position. Good, amazing, who is that? Oh, welcome to class, it's good to have you. Welcome to class everyone. Adeni Hassanat, Barakat, Faith, Fatima, Abu Bakr, Fatima Muhammad, you all welcome to class once again, it's good to have you all. A president elect is someone who has won election as president, but has not yet been sworn in. This term is used during the transition period between the election and the inauguration. For example, after President Muhammadu Buhari was declared back then during Jonathan's reign, what happened? Immediately after the announcement, President Muhammad Buhari was not asked to, oh, 
uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jonathan, stand up. General Muhammad Buhari, have your seat. No. At that period in time where President Muhammad Buhari was already the president, but was not asked to start acting as the president, at that moment, he was the president elect. Someone who already won the election as president, but has not yet been sworn in. An elected president is someone who has been elected and appointed. They have been chosen by the voters and appointed. They're being chosen by the voters and they already assumed the office of the presidency. So there is a difference between a president elect and an elected president. I already used a practical and prime example that you should all understand. Concede defeat. Is this correct? Because the word concede itself, that word already means to admit that you have been defeated. So defeat, the meaning of defeat is already inside the word concede. Do we need to say concede defeat? Is it correct to say that? What is your opinion? It's not correct. It will be tautological. I want more ideas. 31 people, I want more ideas. It's correct, it's not correct. It will be tautological. It is correct. Yes, it is correct. The fact, yes, it is tautological and still correct. The fact that an expression is tautological does not mean that the expression is correct or not. So there are certain expressions that are acceptable tautological expressions. Despite the fact that they are tautological, they're still correct. So concede the fit is correct. Reason why is correct. Aid and abet, it is correct for you to say aid and abet, despite the fact that aid also means abet, and abet is the same as aiding. Betting is the same as aiding, despite that fact. Both are correct. You can say aid and abet in the same sentence, in the same idea. Okay, all and sundry. Sundry means all, all means sundry. Despite that fact, the expression is correct and fixed. In fact, it is idiomatic, standard English. It is correct for you to say reason why, it is correct for you to say again and again. That is, the fact that the expression is tautological does not certainly mean that the expression is incorrect or wrong. We have tautologies, tautological expressions that are not correct and are not acceptable. For example, you, it is incorrect for you to say more better, more better, because positive is good. Uh -huh. Comparative is what? Better. Superlative is best. And this is also displayed and shown in words that start with re, words like revise, reverse. You do not say reverse back, reverse your motto back. No, you do not use back anymore because reverse already has the meaning of moving backwards. You do not say revise again and again because revise means to study again. All right? Do not say repeat it again. You only say repeat because the meaning of again is already communicated inside repeat. So we have acceptable tautological expressions and expressions that are tautological and not acceptable. So the fact that you see, oh, concede already means to admit that you have been defeated. Oh no, concede defeat is not is wrong. No, if you check your Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary. You'll find this example, an example with this expression, concede defeat, and that means it is standard English, idiomatic, correct, polished, to say concede defeat, okay? Mm -hmm. Did we get that? Are we still together? Just type concede in the chat box if yes. 
type concede in the chat box if yes. We have four more slides to go and it's already 9.47. This word is pronounced bigot, <laughs> bigot, bigot, not by God, by by God, by God, by God, it is bigot. The new employee was a bigot who frequently made discriminatory remarks about his colleagues. So the word is bigot, not by God. And the stress is also placed on the first label as it, it is pronounced bigot. Bigot, not by God. When you say by God, mispronouncing the first syllable, especially, and you're also placing the stress wrongly. So you should say bigot, bigot, not by God. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Olaju Makea and Mr. Abdul Qadri Sani, you're doing your job. The camp, you know, people say, this man has the camp from this party to the other party. The camp is not usually used in the political context because the word originally means to live somewhere suddenly or secretly. You use it when someone tries to commit something criminal, offensive. Okay, the man decamped with my money and I need to get him arrested. The man decamped with my money and I need to get him arrested. That's an example to live somewhere secretly. You left with my money secretly and I need to get you arrested. I can use the camp to describe that action of yours. Paula decamps from the hostel with my laptop. You didn't take my permission. You just came to our hostel. You took my laptop and you left with, you may not have stolen the laptop, but you decamped because you didn't tell me you left with my laptop secretly. So that's the context wherein you use the word decamp. The, right words to use in the political context to mean that someone left a political party to join another is the word defect. Defect. 50 members of Key 1-1, let's imagine Key 1-1 is a political party, defected to Q 2-2. The Congress man's decision, defect from his party, caused controversy. So that collocation, there's certain words that go with one another, they go with each other. They do not just go. You have to use the right word for them. The certain words you use in religion, the certain words you use in politics, the certain words you use in the medical word, there's certain things that we just say ordinarily, but they have a different terminology in the word of medicine. So you need to understand the collocations. What's the exact word that people use in this? context. Okay, it's in all languages. In our Yoruba language, Igbo, Hausa, we have collocations. Another expression, you all know the meaning of step down. Another expression that communicates the meaning is stand down. Stand down. So give me examples in the chat box. And that's the end of our class. Give me examples using step down and stand down. Step down for his vice. Good. Good. If the president can step down. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> wow, wow. I want you to use stand down. I already told you that they both mean the same thing. The lady stood down as leader due to undue pressure. Person should stand down for Mrs. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, all of you. It's good to have you. You are all responsible and sensible. African political leaders do not stand. Thank you. Thank you. You're all awesome. I love you all. Thank you. It's good to have you all here. Now, did you find the class educative? Just type educative if yes. Oh, wow, educative and more. Ah, educative, good. Educative, amazing, amazing, good. Use awesome. Educative, good, awesome. 
It's good to have you all as well. Kalthar, Raja Salam, Monsrat Alajide, it's good to have you. Awesome, good, thank you very much. Now, let me take your questions and let's, splendid, interesting and awesome. Ah, Mamala Dumake, Bakari. Educative, great, good. It's good to have all of you. Kindly ask your questions, 10 minutes and let's say goodbye. I do not want to take your time. Some of you would like to vote. Some of you have to rest, you've been working and I do not want to stress you the more. You've come to educate yourselves. All right, ask your questions. So as you ask your questions, for those of you who are just joining in and those of you who are already in, we have a lot of services, we have courses for you. I do not have a specific one that you need to get immediately or deadline, no. But if you need any help on saying your English proficiency, concerning your communication skills, your vocabulary development, your IELTS, public speaking, private classes. We have an online adult school where we teach adults, 18 plus, we teach them effective communication skills, creative writing, public speaking, everything all together. We also have an online kiddie school, which is subscription based. You pay every month for your child. We teach them communication skills. We teach them creative writing, public speaking, presentation mastery, vocabulary development, and lots more. Just 10,000 are per month. If you want to enroll more than one kid, we have a subsidized plan for you. So you can contact me, everything English proficiency, everything communication skills, contact me and let's get started. They're all paid. Whenever we have free classes, I'll always announce, but all these services are all paid. The online adult school, 15,000 are per month. If you want to subscribe for more than a month, you get your discount. The same thing for the online kiddie school for your child. If you want your child to become more proficient use of English, public speaking, communication skills, we will help them achieve just that. So if you find this class educative, do not forget to share your reviews with me. Mr. Adeniyi Sumola, that's not the correct spelling of the word. Okay, it's abattoir, abattoir, not abattio. It's abattoir, abattoir. The stress is placed on the first syllable. Ah, abattoir, abattoir, okay? Not abattio. All right. What is the correct pronunciation of gubernatorial? So yes, that's the correct spelling. And aisle, this is aisle, gubernatorial. And so words that have this, it usually pronounced, I do not have the sound here, let me check my insert. I do not type my sound with this version. Oh, can I have my O here on the IP extension? So Toriel, that's where, okay, tall. yeah, I have it here. Good. So tall, Toriel, Toriel, for example, not to pull, Tutorial, gubernatorial. Okay, the next word is aisle. This is the correct pronunciation. Aisle. This is all. This sound only. Let me copy to save our time. So this is the sound. This is what you pronounce all. Only this vowel sound. All. Awesome. Not are we and not easily. So I'll also have this. Isle and so on. Isle and Isle, yeah. Who else has a question? Can we get the playback of this class? Sir? Yeah, but not immediately. All right. Thank you. It's good to have all of you. Have a fantastic, nice, amazing night's rest. Success at your fingertips. You're most welcome. It's good to have you all. Thank you. Thank you. Success at your fingertips. I want to